Captain Holt summing up feminist male authors. She was such a strong female woman with nice heavy breasts. I can guarantee you, any guy that writes about a woman in that way hasn't spoken to one in at least 10 years. <laughs> and even then, I'm sure there's some other issues going on because who in their right mind would write about women like that? And so many male authors do. Dude, that's why this subreddit exists. There's so many of them. Let's have a laugh at them right now. Guys, welcome back. Hope you're having a great day so far. Thank you so much for tuning back in. More men writing women. This is going to be so much fun. I'm excited. The last video just killed it. Everybody seemed to love it. I had a blast filming it. So, dude, I'm back. I'm having a good day today. I'm excited to get into this. I'm excited about everything, really. YouTube's going awesome. Just everything's going good. And I hope it is with you too. You guys are the best. I was reading some comments before and everyone is just so wholesome and sweet. And like, dude, not everything is perfect all the time. And you're allowed to be angry and you're allowed to be upset. And I'm human. I'm going to have bad days. I'm not not gonna feel like doing stuff and like I'm not saying like everybody that watches me has to be positive because you don't <laughs> but for the most part everyone in our community is and it's so damn awesome like it's so motivating but yeah guys at home please don't feel bad if you're having a bad day and please don't feel like there's something wrong with you if you're not super positive because I totally understand YouTube's been my dream for so long and I just want it to work out and it is working out now so like I'm just ecstatic all the time <laughs> but in saying that I'm very much human and I get angry I get sad and I doubt myself and sometimes I'm lazy. And you know what? That's all okay. As long as you're trying your best, I think that's all that matters. I'm talking way too much, so let's jump into it. They were full and round and using the standard measure. Three and a half milli boobs per handful. You're joking, right? Milli boobs. Um, this is America. We don't measure in milli boobs. We measure in boob inches. Sorry, everyone, but I'm like a little bit taken back by that. What? <laughs> milli boobs? Imagine reading like an erotic book or something like that and you're like, oh, this is so sexy. And then you read milli Milly boobs. That would throw you out of it immediately. Like, it's made up, right? Milly boobs doesn't exist. <laughs> I swear to God, if it does, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm done. I've seen enough from the human race. I'm going to leave now. Here we have some more good plays. Her name was Scarlet Pakistan. Her brown eyes were as brown as the brownest crayon. Dude, oh my God. That's so romantic. I love when he tells me my eyes are as brown as a brown crayon. Oh, so meaningful. <laughs> Nothing gets me going more than thinking about crayons. Obviously, the show's just taken a jab at these sorts of authors, but like they actually write stuff like that. <laughs> it's like they're writing about their fantasies that they know aren't going to happen. <laughs> like they're writing an erotic novel about being with a woman, but they haven't been with a woman <laughs> for years. <laughs> writing it as if they're like some sort of expert. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> she wears sensible shoes that are hot. She can bench press 250, but she has the lean muscles of a Zumba instructor. She's six feet tall and a quarter of a foot wide. Her breasts are large, but not obscene. Her rear is juicy. The only symptom of her period is that it makes her skinny. She glows in the dark, but in an extremely healthy, non-radioactive way. <laughs> oh, I know that's ridiculous, but all I can think about is Mr. Burns in the forest. It's bringing love. Break its legs. <laughs> I bring you love. It's bringing love. Don't let it get away. Break its legs. <laughs> They're obviously making fun of these sorts of guys in the New Yorker as well. That's awesome. Dude, I think it's funny that anybody writes like this. Like, <laughs> and thinks that it's one, right, and two, sexy. <laughs> it's actually like if you asked a neckbeard or a nice guy or an incel to write a story. This was brought to us by Awful Fantasy. And that's what a lot of these are. They were perfect for each other. He was strong, brave, intelligent, heroic, honorable, funny, and empathetic. And she was pretty. Legit though. The man is everything. Oh my God. They're incredible. And yeah, apparently all that women are good for is their looks. Um, <laughs> we've seen this a lot and it's just as disappointing every time we see it. They make it out like women aren't even humans. They make it out like they're not capable of anything and they're just sort of freaking out over everything. And I think a lot of that sort of like, oh, the man is so heroic and brave probably comes from the author and their insecurities. Like there has to be a reason they're writing characters like this. There's got to be something out of whack. I hate when crime shows are like her nails are done, but they're a mess. So a male had to have done them. Like, maybe she's just bad at doing her nails, you weirdos. Yeah, that too, exactly. Like, a guy would not be able to do something like that because, oh no, doing nails, that's for women. Men do heroic important things, not stuff like that. Like the title says, a woman bad at doing womanly things? Preposterous. Yeah, like, oh my god, you're not all the same. <laughs> you know, like, it's just way easier to lump everybody in and pretend everybody's the same. Like, it's way easier to do that than to think about all the different kinds of people, all the different kinds of women, all the different kinds of men, and like, that just 
just takes a lot more effort. So they get lazy and they're like, oh, you're all the same. <laughs> it's not good enough. Pick up your game authors. Come on. I want to be a novel editor, but instead of being sent a manuscript and editing it like a normal editor, I want to be sent to the houses of aspiring male authors with a crowbar so that every time they even come close to describing a woman's humongo, perky, voluptuous, foxy, curvy boobs and ass, I can beat them until they stop being terrible. Please. <laughs> like, these guys need to learn. It's not okay. So damn offensive, so wrong, and it's super, like, self-focused. As funny as it is, if they're writing stuff like this, what do they like in their normal everyday life? Like, they can't be good. Anybody with a logical and reasonable view on women and men, they wouldn't be writing stuff like that. But what do I know? I've never written an erotic novel. If her face fell just short of being beautiful, her body more than made up for it. At 15, Lucia had the body of a woman. Oh, wait, Lucia? Lucia? Had the body of a woman with round, firm breasts and narrow waist and hips that moved with sensuous promise. We're going to have to marry you off early, her father would tease her. Soon you will drive the young men Pazzo, my little... Wait a second. Soon you will drive the young men Pazzo, my little virgin. I want to marry someone like you, Papa, but there is no one like you. What? Okay, so the title says yes, because that's exactly what one notices about their daughter. Sydney Sheldon Sands of Time. What? <laughs> Dude, that makes me want to throw up. Is that for real? Who's Sydney Sheldon? I need to look this person up. Sydney Sheldon was an American writer, director, and producer. Sheldon was prominent in the 1930s. And yeah, that comes through in his work. <laughs> I know you need more context here, but oh, I feel icky and gross and I want to move on. Men animating women. Big head, doe eyes, small nose, pretty lips, thick hair, thin neck, narrow shoulders, perky breasts, tiny waist, wide hips, thick thighs that don't touch, long legs and tiny feet. The absolute freaking nasty ass perv who designed Elastigirl from The Incredibles. Oh yeah, and not just that, you see it everywhere. Like it's just, I don't know, it's weird. It's gross and like it's totally wrong and it creates heaps of insecurities in yourself as well because you see that and you're like, oh, <laughs> I don't look like that. I have no idea who designed Elastigirl from The Incredibles, but I have no idea if they're a bad person or not. I totally get it and it's gross, but like The Incredibles wasn't that bad, you know? <laughs> New Twitter challenge. Describe yourself like a male author would. Her breasts entered the room before her far less interesting face. Decidingly maternal hips and rounded thighs. He found her voice unpleasantly audible. As his gaze dropped from her mouth, still talking to her cleavage, he wondered why feminists were so angry all the time. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? <laughs> I love how everyone's just making fun of these people. It's so funny. Keep it up. It's hilarious. They need to change too. Some of them are really awful. It is a bit of a slippery slope with this sort of stuff. Like some things are really obviously wrong and bad, but some things are like sort of on the fence and it's like, uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> but yes, people who write stuff like that, sort it out. Oh, I've seen this so many times. Battleship. Fun for the whole family. And the wife and the daughter are just doing the washing up in the background. So damn disrespectful. It would have been less disrespectful if you didn't even put them in there. They're just like, oh, okay, we need to put women in this somehow. Let's put them in the background doing the washing up while these guys have fun. If you're gonna be like that, leave them out. That's so rude. I understand this is really old, but still, like, who thought that was a good idea ever? God, times have changed, haven't they? Because I feel like even back then, like, that's still bad, you know? Her nipples were sensuously massive, like those springy doorstop thingies. Playfully, she would brush them, uh, you know what, Tishali, <laughs> against his arm at work while walking past, and the gentle erotic sound would ring through the air. Boy, yo, 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 yo. <laughs> That's like the funniest way to describe someone getting a boner. <laughs> Boy, yo, 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 yo. <laughs> like those springy doorstop thingies. <laughs> and that was by Extra Fabulous on Twitter. Is that the same person that makes the fabulous comics? I hope so. Okay, so this is Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, but her inmost reality, the most fundamental, unbreakable core of her being is something entirely different. She is Anakin Skywalker's wife. Her life before Anakin belonged to someone else, some lesser being to be pitied. Her real life began the first time she looked into Anakin Skywalker's eyes and found in there not the uncritical worship of little Annie from Tatooine. Dude, she was a queen, but somehow that pales with the moment she meets a nine-year-old nose picker. Yeah, of course, you know, my life didn't even exist until I met this man. Like, dude, come on. <laughs> and that's in Star Wars? Stop it. All I am really is Anakin Skywalker's wife, nothing more. God damn, it's so sad, really. And in something as mainstream as Star Wars? That's disappointing. Laurie? Laurie Semple had a mane of brushed back tawny hair that fell over her bare shoulders. Her face was classically beautiful with a straight nose, a wide and sensual mouth, and up slanted eyes. Around 
around her neck, she wore a three-strand choker of emeralds and nobody in the whole room believed for one moment that they were green glass. She was dressed in a clinging low-backed empire line evening dress of flesh-colored silk, so gleaming and tight around the bust that when you first glimpsed her, you had to look again because she looked as if she was topless. Her breasts were enormous and she obviously wasn't wearing a bra. Her nips raised the silk into softly shadowed peaks and when she walked, the bouncing of each bosom was enough to quieten the conversation and have even the few faithful Washington husbands glancing surreptitiously over their wives' shoulders. Oh God, shut that book right now. How is this dress clinging and also empire lined and how does it combine empire lined with a low back and flesh colored silk? This is a disaster. Dude, that is a disaster. I don't know what book that is and I don't want to know. That's when you gotta stop. That's just way too much. It goes on and on and on and ugh. It says so much more about the author than like it just takes you right out of it, doesn't it? It's like, oh God, what's wrong with this guy? Caitlin was one of those rare women. She was amazingly beautiful yet completely without any idea how pretty she really was. She came in at just below average five foot four tall. Her thick lustrous red curls flowed down her back to the slim line of her waist. To be honest, if she were a different person, she would be a thick girl. Her constant on the go lifestyle ensured that she never gained much excess weight. What extra pounds she did carry were distributed in the best places. Her breasts were very large at 38 double E. She was only a couple of sizes away from having to get them custom made. Her waist was a trim 24 inches around, but her hips came in at a curvaceous 40 inches. Most of that taken up by a tight round bubble butt. Her thighs and calves were strong and toned, just a little thicker than Caitlin probably would have preferred if she were able to reconstruct herself. Oh, that makes me want to throw up. That's so gross. Caitlin preferred average guys since she felt they were more in her league. She preferred quiet, shy men with an artistic passion like riders. She could name every Avenger and loved video games, but she also wore a push-up bra and high heels. She often got compared to melons, but she never understood it. Exactly. They're just fantasizing. They're just like, oh my god, what would I want in a girl? And they just spew out this garbage. It's so gross. How do you expect any normal person to read that and not just like feel sick? <laughs> oh god. A 24 inch waist with 40 inch hips. This is getting sort of sad. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> I hate to be the one to break this to you, dude, but as a general rule, women don't pretend to hate men that they're secretly in love with as some sort of elaborate courtship ritual. That's a trope that we made up to justify why the male protagonist always gets the girl in the end, even when it's starkly at odds with prior characterization. In real life, if she acts like she thinks you're a creep, it's because she thinks you're a creep. Specifically, it's a trope invented so that male authors and readers can tell themselves that the women who told them to frick off secretly want to bang them. So it's romantic and totally not creepy to continue harassing them. Exactly. Dude, it's like an intel or a nice guy or a neckbeard wrote a story. They're just trying to make themselves feel better. This is all fantasy and it's always going to be. That's what's sad about it. This is not reality and it's never going to be. That's why all these nice guys and stuff follow girls and do all this awful creepy stuff. They're like, oh, nah, she's secretly in love with me. <laughs> like that one before, if she's in love with you, then she can't maintain eye contact. Oh, sure. <laughs> that sounds right, doesn't it? I'm out of here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. That was some more men writing women. God damn, this is a good subreddit. They're all crazy. Oh my God. Like, it's actually kind of terrifying. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash like. Hitting that like button actually really does help with my videos getting shown to other people and just helping growing the community. It means the world to me. You guys are all amazing and the support has been overwhelming. I appreciate you all so much. All right, let's do the comment of the day. Today's comment of the day goes to Nathalia. I love how like half of Vince's videos are Simpsons references. Did we even have one today? Oh my God, I hope we did. I'll have to put one in right now if we didn't. I totally agree, you know. I'm just combining what I love. YouTube, these subreddits and the Simpsons. It couldn't get any better than that, could it? Thank you guys for all your lovely comments. I appreciate you all so much. Have a lovely rest of your day. Have a lovely rest of your night. And definitely go and check out that subreddit in your spare time. It's a whole bunch of fun. Dude, it's always a good laugh. Guys, have a lovely day. Have a lovely night. And I'll see you tomorrow at the exact same time with two brand new videos. I'll see you then.